formal reports, making your pitch. Um, with basically everything we talk about in technical reporting, you want to think about your audience and purpose. Um, formal reports can have a great impact on the decision-making process. And what you want to do is determine the analytical category that best fits your purpose. Is it comparative, which is better? Causal, why does something occur? Or feasibility, is something a good idea? When you think about comparative analysis, it rates similar items on a clear and definite criteria. Causal analysis explains causes or effects of an event, problem, or decision. And the feasibility analysis assesses the practicality of an idea or a plan. Here's an abstract for a formal report that takes a primarily comparative approach. As you can see from the abstract, the first sentence says, This report compares three different methods for uploading digital photographs from camera to computer. Each method has, first, has strengths and weaknesses depending on the needs and skill level of the photographer. Then it goes through all three uh, methods in a summary way. The conclusion takes a feasibility approach. Um, the conclusion, it says, there exists a variety of potential feedstocks both in Georgia and nearby states that could be utilized to produce biodiesel. And then it talks about why something might be feasible. Um, the elements of an effective formal reports, they should be accurate, appropriate, and clearly interpreted data. Make sure your information is unbiased and from reputable sources. If you think about why we have a reference page, that's one good reason right off the bat. Uh, you should have clearly identified purpose statement. You should address both primary and secondary purposes. And it should have understandable structure. Chunking, paragraphing, heading strategies. You should have a reason, readable style. Writing should be clear, concise, and fluent. You should have audience-centered visuals. Uh, graphs, tables, charts, etc. should be used as appropriate. And, of course, we should have a user-friendly design. This figure shows an effective use of a visual and a formal report. As you can see, the table enables the readers to compare data easily. So if you think about parts of a formal report, oftentimes formal reports come with a letter of transmittal. This precedes the report. Some potential components are acknowledgments, references to sections of special interest, limitations, uh, off-the-record observations, or attempts to persuade the readers to take immediate action. Um, the front matter for a formal report is the title page, table of contents, list of tables and figures, and the abstract or the executive summary. Then, of course, we have the middle part of the report, the text, introduction, introduction body, and conclusion. And then the end matter would be references, glossary, appendices, that sort of thing. So when you think about strategies for formal reports, you want to choose an appropriate delivery format. Once again, you determine your audience and your analytical approach. You should do your research and thoroughly document your sources. Work from a clear purpose statement and use an understandable and readable structure. You should include audience-centered visuals. Uh, it should be a reader-friendly design. Once again, appropriate front matter, introduction body conclusion, and appropriate end matter. And as always, we should proofread our document. Here's a sample of a formal report. The first part is the letter of transmittal. It targets the thing specific reader. It provides additional context. If we look at the title page, it has a running head because it conforms to the APA style. style. The title is clear, encompasses the entire focus of the report. We have a table of contents, and it says, while APA style does not require a table of contents, this was requested. It does help readers find information and visualize the structure of the report. The abstract, of course, fully summarizes the content of the report. And then we get in the report itself. As you can see, and if you've looked at APA style, the introduction does not need a title in APA style. It sets up the problem, however, and indicates the report's causal approach. Background provides helpful but not overly detailed context. There's a clear purpose statement. And then there are subheads within the methodology section to make the section easy to follow. 
once again you want to make the report as easily readable for for your audience as possible um, as you can see there is use the writer uses accurate and clearly interpreted data and then all information from outside sources is documented in text writer not only describes but critiques the previous studies examined also in this case um, here we have the writer providing bottom line results of previous studies there is a table there to help the reader interpret this information um, and then towards the end we have the conclusion that provides a summary of the report and the writer is careful to show in this case because it's a causal approach that correlation does not always equal causation there's a reference page follows the report lists all sources consulted in APA style content that is not central to the report goes into an appendix